All right, welcome back. This is Wake Up Sierra Leone here on AYV Television. We're broadcasting on 101.7 FM in Sierra Leone. It's Channel 33 and on DSTV, it's Channel 399. We encourage you to be a part of the program. Join our Facebook Live broadcast on AYV News Facebook page. Drop a comment and we'll factor that into the program. Right, in our first segment this morning, um, the All People's Congress Party for the past few weeks um, has been calling, um, some members of the party has been calling um, by, on, on the chairperson of the interim committee to resign, um, Alfred Peter Conte. And um, there are allegations of um, incitement, disunity, and Alfred hijacking the party. So this morning, to um, respond to some of these concerns, we have Alfred Peter Conte with us in the studio. Um, Alfred, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Good morning and thank you for having me. Mm. L -l Let's start off, um, Alfred. The party appears to be more chaotic now, even than when you were actually calling for sanity and calling um, for things to be democratized within the party, and then you took the party to court. So what is happening? Those things you were calling for, I mean, they appear to be more bold now in the party. What's the problem? Well, I think few things happened in the past few weeks, um, one of them being the move we're shifting and shaking things mm. to move the party towards democratization mm. and it is something that is not welcomed to the others now i want people to understand the apc is still one solid body and the interim transition governance committee is one body there's no two separate ITGC. It's but, only one. But it does not appear that way. Alfred Peter Conte's faction co would come out to the public and there is the um, Abdul Kabo's faction coming out to the public with different messages contravening each other. So it appears there are two sets of APC members already. Yes. So my situation, we had a lawsuit. We had four defendants. Mm -hmm. And the, the ruling came out in which all four defendants are supposed to come together basically mm. in one way or the other so i'm the the plaintiff the guy that won the case has no option but to work with the people he defeated so now we have a committee of 21 12 of which are former executive members these are the people that we defeated in the case so now coming together is difficult they don't want to accept. I believe there is every effort, enough evidence mm. to show that their intention is to ensure the ITGC fails. Mm. And we have said no to that. When we, you say, forgive me, when mm. you say um, those you, you, you took to court and defeated, um, is it a case of us versus them in the party at the, at the moment in the party yes we mm. have some we have what i call the some people congress mm. people that are in the apc because they believe in certain individuals right. then you have people in the apc that believed in the party mm. and then you have people in the apc that just want to have a jolly moment and have everything going right mm. so the fight the struggle is between the people that believe in certain individuals. The meeting you're saying, the call for yeah. me to, to leave, mm -hmm. you can look at the eye table, you'll see the people sitting there. These are the people that are resisting, these are the people that are always violent, these are the people that are issuing death threats, these are the people that are going out in public and issue, you know, terrible things. They are members of the APC. They are members of the APC. Mm. Mm. And, and you say your, your, your push has been for democracy within the party. I, is it that agenda you're pushing that they're resisting? Not the you per se, but the agenda of democracy within the party. The agenda of democracy is what they're pushing, they're kicking against. Um, prior to me taking over, there was mass printing of cards. They've printed all these fake cards. They manipulated the party's register. So they've done everything to ensure 
that should we go to elections? They say, since you want democracy, we're going to print cards only for people that are going to vote for us. Hmm. So there are thousands of people that applied, never received their cards. We're talking of years. Hmm. And then the people that they want, the people that they believe in, the people that they know are going to vote for them, were the only people that were receiving APC cards. So they've spent billions of leons in printing cards. Now those cards... What are they? What are they in this context? The day are the defunct executive, the mm. previous administration. Mm. So they've done all, everything possible to rig the democracy. What we came in, we put our case to the PPRC, and the case to the PPRC, the PPRC accepted the fact that the party is registered. It's not credible. So therefore, we have to go and re-register. At the same time, we have to do verification of the existing register. So that's the fact. The confusion is, why would the um, membership uh, put up a resistance against uh, democracy when, if you go back to just, uh, just after the 2018 elections, there are members of the party who blamed the loss on APC to the fact that even the the process of getting the flag bearer was not democratic so why would now that membership put up a resistance to democracy when there are some of those people who say it is because of the absence of democracy that they lost the 2018 elections so again i take you to the, the high table these are all the people that were benefiting from the selection so it's not the entire apc i want people to know i call them the silent majority they're sitting out there they're looking at me, they're looking at you, they're looking at them. When those people come out, people will know that there's another side of APC that welcomes democracy. And soon, they will come out. When you say come out, uh, in what specific context? Like e e e expelling them from the party or come out in what sense? No, they will come out and show that we're in support of what this man is doing. We're in support of democracy. We're in support of having a level playing field to allow anybody in Sierra Leone, as long as you're 18 years old and you're willing to join the All People's Congress Party, you're free to join the party. Uh, why, why would there be allegations against you that uh, you're sent by um, the APC main rival, the SLPP, to destabilize the APC and you know, disenfranchise the party ahead of the 2023 elections? Why are there such allegations against so you? So those are the allegations they're using to fuel or mislead the people. Those allegations are always coming when they know they can't win the argument. It's simple. Come up with credible debates. Let's talk about it. I'm willing anytime. So anytime they lose the argument, they go out to incite the people that this guy is an agent of the SLPP. Let, let, let's get to talk about the specific um, allegations against um, Alfred Peter Conte. So first off, you've been, ac you've been accused of being a dictator, unilaterally making decisions, and we've seen evidently that Alfred will sign a press release, Ab Honorable Abdul Kabo will sign another, countering each other, contradicting each other. So where, if, if you talk about your, your quest is to democratize the APC. Now, why are you being accused of being a dictator and unilaterally making decisions in the committee? Well, being a dictator and unilaterally making decisions is, in fact, a crime. We have a court order mm. that won't allow me to make a unilateral decision, especially when it has to do with executing those court orders. Mm. So every decision that I have made that has to do with the executing those court orders, have been something that we held a meeting. Mm. We, we would go into those meetings. We would deliberate. People would talk. People would give counter positions. At the end of the day, somebody will move a motion. Somebody second the motion. We put it to vote, and they vote for it. So everything that I have done, mm. we have evidence of meeting and minutes. So it's easy. I feel sometimes I wonder how it's easy for somebody to just lie like that. Those are lies. That's all I'm so those to those I've never done anything unilateral. Those meetings you're referring to, <laughs> the, uh, the allegation is that, oh, Alfred has 
members of the of, of the committee that the court ordered for him to bring in as a chairman mm -hmm. and when alfred wants to meet alfred calls his his faction his guys his allies or political stooges should i put it mm -hmm. and those meetings are called when parliament is sitting so the other guys would not be present in those meetings and evidently when alfred calls with his own guys they form a quorum so whether or not these mps are there let's wait we call meeting when they have sittings in parliament and they're not available that's the allegation here so those allegations are also false mm. We've called meetings when Parliament is sitting, and they will attend. They've attended numerous meetings when Parliament is sitting. Mm. And to say we can't do anything as a party because the parliamentarians are not around, mm -hmm. that also is not something we're willing to accept. Mm. So this is what's going on. If Parliament is sitting, let's assume, mm. and we call the meeting, if those parliamentarians all eight of them mm -hmm. decided not to come. We have four members that's supposed to come. So we should have at least 13 people, provided everybody else have the luxury of coming to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, when that happens, you can understand, OK, we have a committee. We have 13 people. They can voice their opinion. You can ask anybody that I brought into my um, into the, the ITGC. Mm -hmm. I've never prepped them to go in and vote for anything or any particular. Nobody will tell me or will tell you he told me to do this. Mm -hmm. They have freedom. So at the end of the day, you call a meeting. You're expecting to see 21 people. And then you go in. They're doing what they call a boycott. So all 12 of them will refuse to come. There is a press release to the effect, a letter that we wrote, an open letter, to the leader of the opposition in parliament, basically echoing the behavior of the parliamentarians. Because we've called nine meetings, and they've boycotted all nine meetings. Your agenda initially is to uh, imbibe democracy into the party. But you seem to be failing. No. Um, actually, like I said, if you listen to the noise, that's what the picture they're trying to paint. As I speak to you today, we've started training people that are going to conduct the registration process. It started on Monday. Uh, we've done, I think, seven districts, as I speak. And we're working towards training people. Next week, Monday, the APC will start officially to re-register and verify the old register and have by in 20 days time from Monday we'll finish all the registration we'll have a new set of register that has the level of credibility that we're looking at and after that we're going to go into elections it's going to happen they're fighting so that don't happen they're doing everything and they have some support you, 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 from some government institutions. The there you keep referring to, you, you've not been able to come up with names. And on the part of those who accuse you, they're bold enough to mention your name as the key problem in the party right now. But you keep saying they, and who are the they specifically? Well, it's 12 people that are holding us back. Um, we, the judge, in his wisdom, has dealt with the APC for some time. In this final judgment that he gave, he appointed one position in the APC, the chairman. That's it. He, because he knew the last time he gave a, a ruling, he appointed a secretary. And the secretary didn't do well. You know, In fact, things came out to the point where the outgoing secretary general was found guilty of contempt, which is a criminal offense. You understand? So this time around, the judge said, I am going to have only a chairman. So we sat down in the committee. We said, all right, let's create standing committees. These standing committees, that's where we created the secretariat. It's made up of five people. And we created the publicity. We created organizing. We created the finance committee. These are all sets of people. But the only committee that is going after or against everything we're doing, the committee that the defunct executive is using to throw spanners into the works of the ITGC became the secretariat. So we looked at it. We said, OK, we held a meeting. 
again, a legitimate meeting. We said people came up with different um, proposals that the behavior of the Honorable Abdul Kabu is just unacceptable. It's, it's, his behavior is maladministration. Nobody has ever seen that type of behavior where the, the, the chairman will ask you to put out a press release, you will refuse, and then once the chairman does it, you will go on, because I am the head of each of those standing committee, because I'm a member of each of them. So that's what's going on. With the, the, they came up with a resolution after the meeting, and in that resolution, the ITGC decided that the Honorable Abdul Kago is no longer secretary of the committee, and is no longer part of the secretariat because of this thing you're talking about. Uh, and with all the infight uh, within the party, well, the one after the election, after 2018, the court sessions back and forth, and back where you're at right now as a political party, it seems it's, it's just an easy wave for the SLPP to retain the presidency in 2023 elections. It seems. I like the word it seems, but it is not going to happen. Like I told you, um, we'll do what it takes. But how successful would it be? A, a house that cannot hold itself together, a destabilized and disorganized house, not in unity. How do you go then into a battle? So, like I said, we're walking towards it. By the end of next week, I'll probably come again and tell you that the APC register this much people already and we're on track. Are you heading to fail the next election, to lose the election woefully? No, the next election we're going to win and it's not, there's not going to be a runoff. I want you to take that to the bank. Let me take you back quickly just to the allegations. Um, you've removed Honor Honorable Abu Kago as a secretary of the committee which again um, boils down to so, some major allegations that oh, these Honorable Abdul Kabul's faction is just um, standing in the way of Alfred Peter Conte's scheme. Uh, and the scheme here is Alfred Peter Conte is conniving, is, is conspiring with Chief Samuel Samsumana to give him the leadership of the party. And Samsumana is said to be your biggest benefactor, putting monies in your pocket. How true. It's all false. Mm. Let me just explain that. Go ahead. In the ruling that the judge gave, he said prior to the NDC, which is the National Delegates Conference, mm -hmm. he wants the ITGC to resolve all unresolved membership disputes in accordance mm. to Article 10 of the APC Constitution. So all we did was do what the judge wanted. Mm. We came out with a statement resolving all unresolved membership issues. Now it's a resolution. And in putting a resolution mm -hmm. that has a history, that has a history, mm -hmm. what do you do? You have to do citation. So we cited instances where the, 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 the former vice president and member of this party was reinstated. It was reinstated after we lost the first rounds of the election, um, at that time, um, the Honorable Alpha Khan was the publicity secretary of the APC. He stood at the, at the party's office um, and he made the pronouncements, mm -hmm. welcoming Chief Alahaji Samsumana back into the APC. The, the former vice president, Victor Fo, was on TV welcoming the former Vice President Chief Alahaji Samsumana back into the APC. And after that, they held a NAC meeting. Now, I want you to know a non APC member will not attend a NAC meeting. Mm -hmm. So, Chief Alahaji Samsumana was invited. He attended a NAC meeting. He walked into the meeting. He got a standing ovation. They talked. He stayed in the meeting. Did he, sorry, did he attend that meeting as a member of NAC or invited by NAC? invited by NAC as a member of the APC. You cannot go there if you're not APC. So he was already reinstated. So we use his situation as a citation. Citation. So that's all. But we gave a blanket. It's not amnesty. We, everybody that was 
illegally because we know most of these people that were removed from the APC were not removed legally. They were removed because somebody said, I have the power to that, do so, I'm doing so. That unconditional acceptance of Chief al Haji Samuel Samsumana into over APC, I mean, with all the public statements you've um, mentioned that were made by APC um, stalwarts, some APC stalwarts, it goes back to after the elections, Chief al Haji Samuel Samsumana, in a letter written to the APC Secretariat, requested to join the APC again and then we saw a reply from the secretariat saying it's only the highest body that expelled chief samuel samsumana ha that has the authority to reinstate him and that that highest body has not met so how come did this committee give an unequivocal reinstatement to chief al Haji samuel samsumana with, le with those letters in the public domain it's a beautiful question now i want us to understand what we did go ahead we reinstated everybody it wasn't just chief al Haji samsumana mm. everybody everybody that was aggrieved like what you said based on what the previous administration did mm -hmm. So we reinstated everybody unconditional. And speaking to you, this is the highest decision making body of the APC currently. So waiting for another higher de highest de de decision making body, that's up to them as, mm -hmm. I'm, as far as I'm concerned. But does the committee have the authority to reinstate anyone? The committee does. The, the judge gave us the power in the ruling, paragraph 9010 that this committee governs the overall affairs of the APC up until the NDC, which is the National Delegates Conference. That reinstatement is apparently what has brought about contestations in the APC now. Because for many, oh, in fact, Alfred Peter Conte has received 100 million from Chief al Haji Samuel Samsumana. He has received 80 million, and these are monies which, I mean, people said, Alfred, you have received from Chief al Haji Samuel Samsumana as your benefactor. So you're do doing all you can to give him the ticket of the APC for the 2023 elections. So let's put those monies into perspective. Go ahead. We walked in on the 13th of May. That's when we took over. On the 26th of June, unprecedented elections. We're talking of six by elections. Okay? We walked in, the coffers of the APC was, uh, was laughable. Let's put it this way. Mm. Okay? We called a meeting of stakeholders at the party office. All of us, 21 of us, were present. And we put the case that we need money. The, the initial um, budget for what we need to mm. run six by-elections was around two point something billion leons. Mm. So we put the case forward. To and the party did not have that? Not near. Mm. <laughs> so we put that case in front of them. All of them were there. All the so-called flag bearers, former flag bearer, mm. aspirants, and all that. And Chief Alaji Samsumana was there too. So he stood up and said, I'm going to pledge 100 million mm. leons towards this uh, um, project. After that, few other people pledge 5 million and little, you know, whatever they can. The next day, he came with the money and handed it over to the APC ITGC, not me. Mm. And I have a ledger distribution of the monies. So it's not like I took the money and kept it and, st no. Mm -hmm. We gave it to the finance committee. The finance committee took a ledger. I'm gonna make that public to put all this to rest. Mm. And the finance committee um, disbursed the money. Honorable Aaron, you're in charge of Tonkolili. That's where constituency 056 is signed next to the money he received. So that's the 100 million. Mm. Then we came to another big event, which was the National Voters Registration Drive. 
we were supposed to have 1,000, I think, 815 agents times two. You multiply by two because mm. it's two agents per registration center. And you have to give them incentive. You have to pay them. We did an estimate. That was supposed to be $3.5 billion. Um, we put the message out that the party needs money. Chief Alahaji Samsumana came and gave $80 million towards that. Uh. And that also, we have the way the money was spent. So that's the 180. Uh, Alfred, continue to stay with us. We'll come back to continue this conversation. You mentioned that um, Chief uh, Samsumana has been giving that money to sort of support the activities of the party. Okay. But is he the only financial contributor towards the expenses of, of the, the committee? Um, no, he's not. There are others. But the question is they're using the, his contribution to finding the divide. The reality is he's the highest contributor if you're looking to put things in perspective. So the time for the by-elections after we receive 100 million from it, when you combine everybody else's, it's around 100 and maybe 20 or 30 million. So if one person puts something like 45%, you know? So he's been the, the highest contributor. Like I was saying with the national voters registration, we needed three point something billion. We ended up getting 115 million 500,000. If he's not the only financial contributor, why single out his contribution and make an issue out of it? So this is what happened. After we lost the election in 2018, most of the aspirants that aspired to become flag bearer started campaigning. And even the former flag bearer started campaigning. So they've campaigned for over four years. And now we have a court ruling that says, we want you to bring everybody that was here before, or whatever resolve, whatever membership issues you have. And we did that. Now by doing that, people are just afraid that he's gonna come, he's gonna run to become president. We're dealing with membership issues. Whatever comes after is not our concern. Our concern is the judge told us, we want you to resolve all unresolved membership issues. And we've done that. And speaking of resolving membership issues, what's the level of support or cooperation given to the interim committee by Alpha Khan? Well, Alpha Khan is, is basically out there, you know, and... Is he still a member of the APC? Well, according to him, he's still a member of the APC. According to the party? No, according to Alpha Khan. No, but according to the party, is he a member of the party? Oh, yeah, he is a member of the okay. party. Okay. And what level of support has he been given the committee? Well, he hasn't been visible or he hasn't shown, he hasn't given any level of support, per se. So he's, uh, he's out there, but he hasn't involved into the committee. Let me quickly ask this question before we take some messages, Alfred. Um, the PPR, I, I read a, 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 a letter from the PPRC that um, the commission is concerned that even the court order, I mean, the, the party does not seem to be going with the court order. And so they invited even, I think, elders of the party and some state actors to a meeting so they can help to to redeem the APC. First off, how did the committee receive that particular um, statement from the PPRC? Well, any effort to bring peace is welcomed by the committee, mm. any effort. Um, it's unfortunate, in my estimation and other people's estimation, mm. the PPRC has been part and parcel, if not the problem in this particular committee. The judge... Do you consider the PPRC to be part of the problems? Yes. Go ahead. This is why. Um, we have a committee known as the ITGC. Mm -hmm. When the PPRC want to deal with the ITGC, even in their directives for the lower level elections, they were taking two submissions. When they write to us, they write two letters, one to the chairman and one to the secretary. 
And everything they came up with is something that just will find a divide. Mm. So I had a meeting on Monday with the PPRC chairman, and I told him to his face. I said, you have the problem. Mm. You cannot treat the ITGC as two separate entities. We're one. In fact, a newspaper came in and said the PPRC is conniving with the sacked Secretary General. I tweeted that also, mm. just so people will understand. So the fight, the, the, the problem we're having is mainly people are looking at this and they say, oh, let's see how we can make them, le let's see how we can divide them further. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of that, on the phone now, we've been joined by Honorable Abdul Kagbo. Uh, his name has come up in the conversation. Uh, Honorable, good morning. Are you there? Yes, good morning. So the interim chairman has um, alleged that uh, you are sort of to summarize uh, have been a tool you, you've been you've been put aside for insubordination uh, what do you say for yourself of course he knows that he does not have the authority he does not have the moral standing he does not have the audacity he really is explicitly clear go to paragraph 96 the judge deliberately stated that because of unity Decisions of the ITGC shall be by simple majority. Ask him how many people he sat with that agreed to remove me as secretary of the committee. He does not have the number. And you cannot take decision when you don't have the number. One thing he is feeling and he's thinking is that he is an executive chairman of the All People's Congress, which is not true. You know, he is just the head of ITGC. And ITGC is a committee instituted by the court to run the affairs of the party. So the the, the powers the executive chairman would have in the APC, he does not have. Because any decision the committee should make should be by simple majority, which he does not command. You know, He has performed to the extent that there are some people whom he appointed that have seen that he is not working to the progress, towards the progress of the party, and they have deliberately disassociated themselves from him. So now he has only seven people in the committee, and seven people in the committee can't run the committee with what is stated in the ruling of Justice Fisher. Sorry, Honorable Abdul Kabul, would come to look at, um, you know, the legality of the powers uh, upon him to do that. But let's look at the allegations he made against you that in subordination, when you're asked to put out a press release, you refuse to do that. Uh, why has there been that hostility where you refuse to take instructions from the chairman? Again, I am not to take instructions from the chairman. Let's go again to the ruling. The ruling says decisions of the ITGC shall be by simple majority. So I am obliged to be to take instructions from simple majority than the chairman. The chairman does not instruct or control the operations of the ITGC. The operations of the ITGC are deliberately as couched in the ruling of Justice Fisher as to be dictated by simple majority. So the chairman can't go at variance with simple majority and you expect me to go by the chairman as if a special power has been given to the chairman. The ruling is very instructive, the ruling is very clear, the ruling is very, is very simple to understand that decisions of ITGC shall be by simple majority. And, and what constitutes the simple majority? simple majority? Say again. What constitutes the simple majority? In the committee of 21, the simple majority is level. That is also in the advice we not sent to the committee by CPIC. You know, the number is clear. The committee is the committee of 21. So simple majority of 21 is 11. On, on, Honorable Abu Kago, are you banking on the wordings you've um, cited from the judgment? Are you banking on that to disrupt um, the progress or the leadership of Alfred Peter Conte? To say, I mean, in other words, are you fighting the war of um, the, the vacated executive members of the APC? No, no, let me make this clear. I am fighting against unconstitutionality in the APC. I am fighting against dictatorship in the APC. I am being very, very compliant with the rule of the court and the constitution of the party. Let me tell you where we got, where I, Alfred and I got it, got, fell apart. Yeah? 
Alfred knew. In fact, when he were ID, somebody called me to pay attention to the interview. And why, where I met this, where he was living with George's um, 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 ruling on, on, on reserve membership. Alfred didn't read the complete paragraph 1904. He selected the first minute, which is a deliberate attempt to pervert the ruling of the judge. Let me read everything. In the first minute, that is what he read. The judge said, we should resolve on resolve membership issues prior to the National Delegate Conference, pursuant to Article 10. Article 10 is dealing with new enrollment, is, doing, is dealing with new registration. So if you have never been part of the All People's Congress, and you attempted to be part of the All People's Congress, but there was a problem along the line, your membership issue was not resolved, then the IPCC is obliged to do that prior to the National Delegate Conference. But let me read the second link, which is very clear. The judge said in his ruling, you can go to paragraph 90.10.4, it is said, for those membership issues that need to be resolved at the National Delegate Conference, especially in pursuance to Article 13 F and G, should be included in the agenda for the National Delegate Conference. Let me tell you what Article 13 F and G says. In fact, Article 13 entirety, in entirety is dealing with um, um, forfeiture of membership, suspension, expulsion, you know, um, and, and, and the article is very important. G is saying, F is saying, if you have been suspended, if you have forfeited your membership, if you have resigned from the party, if you have been expelled from the party, the only competent body that should admit you into the party is the National Delegate Conference. That is why in his wisdom, Justice Fisher stated that it should be included in the National Delegate Conference. And let me tell you, all of us want Chief Samsumana to come back to the APC because with that number we cannot win the elections. But again, we cannot attract litigation. We cannot create the opportunity to take the party to court. Let me oh, oh, Honorable Abu Kabu, is this a fight between Chief Al Haji Samuel Samsumana? and Dr. Samoa Marti Wilson, um, Wilson Kamara using the phases of Alfred Peter Conte and Honorable Abu Kabu. No, 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 let me make it clear. Mm. We have had more than six meetings to seven meetings where we have invited all, most of the flag bearers to the ITGC. We did not invite uh, uh, Dr. Samoa Kamara. Alfred will tell you that we have sat with more than six or seven flag bearers and Dr. Samora Kamara was not invited to that meeting. We have sat in a meeting with the Big Six on several countless occasions. Dr. Samora was not invited to that meeting. They just want to create a picture, an imaginary picture. We have been very, 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 very much on bias. You understand? But let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what is happening. Alfred thinks he has the audacity to go against the ruling of Justice Fisher. He has the audacity to go against the advice in notes of the PPRC. He has the audacity to go against the Sarajevo police. And he has been doing it with impunity. Nothing has resulted. You see? And let me tell you, he, he has shown clearly how can you forge a receipt? How can you forge a receipt for Chief Samsumana, you know, and backdated, backdated it to, the, to, to 2016, from 2016 to 2022? When he knew that Chief Samsumana contested 4040 in 2018. And let me tell you, Samuel, please, let me tell you. Alfred took this party to court because some people went against the constitution of the party. And at the end of the day, we had to spend four years in court. And at the end of the day, the judge ruled against the party. Honorable Abdul Kabu. Honorable Abdul Kabu. Um, Alfred Peter Conte has submitted here this morning that they've, inv they've called about nine meetings and you guys have not shown up. That is you, the members of parliament, that you've not fallacious. shown up. You, you, you've you've held the committee to ransom and they can no longer no, no, wait for you. Fallacious. So, in, in, in other fallacious. words, you're not treating the committee with seriousness. You feel no, no, no. and operate like you own the APC and that is killing the progress of the APC. Is that anything to go by? That is fallacious. I expect the truth to come out from Alfred as he seated there. 
you know, that is fallacious, that is malicious. They have never summoned nine meetings. It's a big lie. It's a big lie. And let me tell you how we normally summon meetings in the 21 man committee. It is myself, the secretary, who sends the meeting notice to every member of the committee. That is how it has been happening since we formed the 21 man, since we constituted the 21 man committee. So who can call meetings in the 21 man committee? It's the secretary. So if I don't call meeting, who else has the power to call meeting? And I have called meetings countlessly. I have sent the notice to the chairman. I have sent the notice to other members. And they have deliberately refused to attend these meetings. But, but, but in the past, they were attending meetings summoned by me. So, I, so, so are you saying, oh no, but just quickly out of I, curiosity, are you saying you've also been calling for meetings, but um, the no, chairman... No. And his people have not been attending, and he also yes. have been, um, and his people have been calling meetings. You've not been attending, so there is a, a, a clear line of division here that you have two ITGC running the APC. No, no, not two, not two, not two. We have only one ITGC, and the decisions of that one ITGC should be by simple majority. I, the meeting I called was attended by 14 members of the committee. 14 members asking, asking, as you see there, how many people attended this meeting. If you are not well constituted, you don't have the right to take decisions on behalf of the ITGC. If you are not well constituted, you don't have the finesse to take any actions on behalf of the ITGC. As read, APC was not handed over to you. APC was not handed over to you. APC is an organized political party. You are just the head of ITGC. You are not the one APC as you do in your family. APC is not your family. Where you tell your kids, go and stand there, go and sit there, go and do this. And we have been tolerating it for quite a while. Honorable Abukabu, Honorable Abukabu, just quickly, who would you want to be the flag bearer of the APC? Anybody who wins in the National Delegate Conference. That is why we want to create a level playing field. We don't want to go against the Constitution. Let me tell you the intention of Alfred. He wants to go against the Constitution by illegally reinstating Chief Samsumana so that other flag bearers will take the party to court and the party will not have the right to contest in the 2023 election. We have stood our ground. We have said nobody will go against this Constitution and the decisions of ITCC are going to be by simple majority. If you, if you are accusing uh, Alfred Peter Conte of being a sellout, Alfred has also submitted here that, I mean, you people are being um, financed by some state institutions, uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Abdul Kabu. So, in essence, he's saying you have sold the party out to the ruling class and, f and, and finding the disunity. I mean, that deep rooted field is becoming bold because you've taken monies from, from the state to, 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 to kill the party. Again, you see, uh, 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 the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. You know, he has collected money from people and he, want, and he is under obligation to satisfy those people. You cannot collect more than two to three hundred million from a flag bearer and you have promised the flag bearer that you will be stating as against the constitution, as against the ruling of the judge, and you have not succeeded in doing that. You think you can force your way in doing that. You have all seen in the open that monies have been given to him for which he has not accounted and he is so insistent, he is so dictatorial, he is so disrespectful of constitution, of state institutions. When we went to PPIC, he spoke to the chairman with, 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 with arrogance. And that is the man that is said for you. You cannot mm. blame for democracy when you yourself is not democratic. So uh, we are not going to allow any further dictatorship in the party. Honorable Abdul Kabu, what, what, what's your biggest... Um, issue with Alfred Peter Conte and what it would it take and what would it take for yourself and the entire ITGC to work together in the interest of the party? Now, our biggest problem with him is that he thinks he has all the right to take decisions on behalf of the party because he is chairing the ITGC. Even though the judge in his ruling said decisions of the ITGC will be by simple majority. And he has been using the ITGC for his personal aggrandizement. You couldn't believe it that as the disappointed wrote a letter for financial assistance to all the embassies in Sierra Leone. It did not inform the committee. He went there solicitously with the intention that they would give him the money so that he would keep the money for his own personal aggrandizement. Peter Conte collected money from various people up to now he has not accounted for a dime in the money that he collected. It is you 
refusing the party for his own personal aggrandizement as he will not kill the party some of us have suffered so from. He was nowhere, he was nowhere to be seen. Most of us who suffered for this party, who were in university killing ourselves for this party, never knew him. He was imposed on the party. Honorable Abdul Kabo, Honorable Abdul Kabo, what yes, would you consider? Because I mean, you, the members of parliament, are very integral components within the governance structure of the APC. Alfred Peter Conte, as chairman of the ITGC, is very integral in that structure um, of the APC. What would you consider to be the reformatory way forward in ensuring that this bad blood um, you both are, are, are showcasing, are displaying or exhibiting to the public, I mean, is coiled down and, and gets put to the interest of the APC above your individual yes, interest and yes. sentiments. It is, the, it is because of the interest of the APC that we are against anybody who wants to go against the constitution of the party, thereby attracting litigation against the party. It is for the interest of the APC. It is for the interest of the APC that we don't want to go against the ruling of Justice Fisher so that the party will not be held responsible. It is for the interest of the APC that we want everything to be done accordingly and we don't want dictatorship again in the party. So all that we have been doing is for the interest of the APC and not for the personal interest of Alfred Peter Conte. He does not seek the interest of the party. That is why he is against some of us when we have stood our ground to ensuring that we don't do anything that will attract litigation against the party. If anybody takes this party to court, there is every proclivity that this party will not go in 2023 election. So as the Peter Conte alone would not in any uncertain terms take, do anything that will warrant this party to be sued again. All right. We have to round off the conversation, um, Honorable. But we'd have to pause here. Um, we'll definitely create more um, platforms to have this conversation um, heard. But uh, um, Alfred, just, just quickly, Honorable Abu Kabu has also accused you of forgery, that you forged receipts to just, I mean, comfortably situate Samsumana within the APC, you backdated the receipt. He's also accusing you of misappropriation and corruption. Uh, and these are grave allegations, uh, I mean, for a leader. So thank you for that. And uh, I think it's good he was allowed to say whatever he said. I need to make a few things clear. Go ahead. Number one, I did not backdate the receipt. I think what he meant to say was we allowed the man to pay his backlog dues. That's what it was. But the date on the receipt is the exact day that he made the payment. Okay. You know, <laughs> I need to laugh. It's funny. But who has the, the mandate to issue receipts? Is it the chairman or the secretary? I didn't know. The, 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 the head of the finance committee. Mm, okay, when payment is made. Yes, it's the finance committee. So mm -hmm. that receipt was issued right. by the head of the finance committee. Now let's go to all this noise. And mm. let me use this opportunity right. to put it to rest. The The... Um, the former vice president's situation in the APC is different from anybody else. How the sure? letter that you, you referred to, when he writes the letter to the, to the now defunct executive that he's looking to come back, we were under the 1995 APC constitution. Now we're under a different constitution, which is the 2022 constitution, the constitution that reformers fought for to exclude every selection and certain issues in it. Now, in this new constitution, prior to, to the situation we're in, the Secretary General back then wrote a letter to Chief Samsuman saying, you've been reinstated to the APC reinstate so him paying all the money that he's talking about he paid from 2016 when he was kicked out to date so that's what that's the thing. reinstated but subject to the approval of the national delegates conference in that based, very letter that's based on the 1995 constitution yes, but it was stated in that letter yes now we look at the 2022 constitution mm. in the 2022 constitution there is no room there is nothing here that mentioned the word reinstate 
Hmm. In this constitution, it says readmit. So if somebody is coming back from expulsion, that he just said expulsion and all these false things that they were doing, and want to come after, then he's coming back to be readmitted. Meaning everything is done, his tenorship is coming to a fresh start. He's readmitted. Okay? These people, are re they told him he's been reinstated. And the word reinstated is not something that came out lightly. It came from the, the lawsuit. I want them to read. They don't read. It came from a lawsuit with Echoas that he won. And in that judgment that they gave, they said he must be reinstated in his political party. So that's why the man that hates him the most, that even... Mayor, was it in, in his political party or as vice president? That statement from the ECOWAS, the well, judgment. It, no, I, I, the vice president thing, that's another thing. No, the section. reinstatement from I'm the decision of the, party. Of the Yes, from his, to the political. Go ahead. So that's why they use the word reinstatement. So when you use the word reinstatement, the judge said, yes, when you go to convention, this particular article 13, uh, uh, um, F and G, should be included in the agenda. Mm. For those people that fits this particular category. He's not one of them. He was reinstated. And there's no reinstatement here. And even in this, it's not like you are forced to do it. And when you write a constitution, you don't use the word may. May means it's optional. They said he may apply and do this and do that. It's may. It's not must. So the whole argument about this man, he's been reinstated. You reinstated him. And now he's in. Mm. So we don't have anything about that. Now let's go to the allegation of misappropriation, corruption, and soliciting funds um, <laughs> secretly, well, suspiciously in his words to the embassies. I've never solicited funds to embassies. I've never signed a letter that I'm aware of to any embassy soliciting funds. Mm -hmm. If he had the evidence, he would be all over the world right now. So those are just part of the allegations that makes me bite my lip sometime and say, wow. But you can tell he's angry and all that. Let me tell you, he spoke about simple majority, okay? The ruling says decisions, underline the word decisions by the ITGC, mm -hmm. is by simple majority. Sierra Leone, we just completed um, voters registration, correct? So let me say ECSL came out with 3.5 million registered voters. Mm. On the day of decision making, 2023, I see it there, decide 2023, mm. right? On that day of decision making, if out of the 3.5 million registered voters, only 1.2 million shows up, or 1.5 million people shows up to vote, are you going to tell me their decision is not going to be counted? But the, it's not the same in this context. It is the same. The judge did not, did not say it's, it's, you should have 11. He said decisions. And decisions are taken in meetings. Right? You take decision in a meeting. You don't take decision as... We've never been in a meeting after the, the first few he meetings. He clearly spoke about the simple majority being that it's 21 people, it, it would Good. have to be 11. Now, it's simple majority of people in a meeting, participating in a meeting and ready to vote. Okay. If, you, if you're not in a meeting, you can't say simple majority of 11. Mm. If we say, the, the judge never said that. And again, in the APC Constitution, Article 21F, it says meetings in the APC mm -hmm. is one third. One third forms a quorum. So if we have 21 people, one third of 21 is seven. And also he's made uh, other allegations about the issues that you took the party to court for. You're now found guilty of those issues. Well, he wasn't able to put them into perspective because what issues did I take the, court, the, the, the party to court for? I took the party to court because they did not follow the constitution. And I have followed the constitution. He's talking of constitution. I'm quoting constitution here. Everything we've done, the simple majority, the judge never defined it. So what did we do as law-abiding citizens of this country? I said, you know what? How do we hold meetings? Because they're not coming to the meetings. Mm. We went to the APC constitution. We look at what you call meetings. In the meetings, we have three sets of meetings. 
emergency meetings is two-thirds. Convention, the National Delegates Conference, is 50% plus one. Regular meetings, which is what we're having, is one-third, is what forms a quorum. So one-third of 21 is seven. So if we called a meeting and they boycotted the meeting, we sat in that meeting, we took decision that will affect them, they have no way out but and, to accept it. Alfred, it is legal and we're going to go back. As, as we round off, how inclusive can the IGTC be? You mentioned that you've called meetings, you invited flag bearers, Honorable Abuka was saying, oh wait, they did not invite Dr. Samura Kamara. So it, it, it's, a, it's becoming very apparent that the fight is between Sam Sumana and Samura Kamara in the APC, and Alf, um, Sam Sumana using the face of Alfred, and um, my, uh, Dr. Samura Kamara using the face of Abdul Kagbo. And, uh, so what's the way forward? It's, let me address that, then I answer your question. Go ahead. They held a meeting, wherein they were calling for my death, they were calling for all these things. Mm. And who was in the meeting? He said they never invited him. It was Dr. Samora, Usman Fode Yansane, um, a guy from McKinney who was the regional um, um, chairman for the North, Ali Komona. They came in and they've been regrouping. They've been trying to do something. And it's not like they're going to use democracy. They're going to disrupt and use violence. Mm. Those are the two things. And I'm using this opportunity to alert securities. That's why we wrote them. We wrote the police that moving forward, we wrote the ONS as well. Any meeting in the APC must be approved because we know what led to in us the being- In the you mean? In the headquarters or anywhere? Anywhere, mm. because we know what led to this government accusing our party as a terrorist party. Mm. So we don't want to repeat the same. Okay. But since in the past six or seven weeks, we've noticed the police has been, you know, they gave us a, a letter one day saying these two meetings are cancelled. But they went ahead and just walked by the police and went in and held a meeting. One of them is the meeting where I told you Dr. Samura was there. It was just them, the, the same sets of people mm -hmm. trying to shake things again. But the reality now, you speak of, uh, you ask about the, the way, way forward. The way forward. The way forward is um, there's one ITGC, there's one chairman court-appointed chairman. I saw a tweet from the Honorable Abu Kabo <laughs> that they've, they've replaced me and they met, I think they held a meeting, they've appointed a new chairman, um, um, something Dumbuya, you know, SBB Dumbuya. And that is in itself a contempt. Who have you appointed as secretary to the committee? Well, because of the behavior, we don't want to take chance. We have a secretariat, mm. a committee, and then as time goes okay. on, we'll say you do this and you do that. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we cannot um, run through your messages because the messages are, are, are for and against. And we would not want to create a platform here. But, I mean, um, you can actually go through the messages. We have hundreds of them. But thank you very much, Alfred Peter Conte. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much to Honorable Abu Kabu, um, who spoke to us online.